Hi everyone, if you're wondering why my background is different, it's because I'm spending the week cat-sitting my friend's cats in London. How incredible is this cat? This is Thor. He's a kitten, if you can believe it, because he's absolutely massive. And he's a Maine Coon cat. Look at the toe floof. And he has to be the sweetest cat that I have ever, ever met. He's so gentle. Look at him. And so soft. Anyway, if I just move here. So welcome to my physics IGCSE Ed Excel paper two predictions video. Thor and I are gonna be talking you through our top tips and our kind of predictions then. So what you can expect from this exam. I'm gonna start by prefacing it by saying, do not lose hope. If you feel that paper one did not go as well as you hoped, as I've said previously, human nature dictates that we focus on the negatives. We don't think, hey, actually I did an amazing job on that electricity question or whatever question it was that went particularly well. I want you to think about the positives and how you performed well, rather than those niggly one marks that you might have lost. I really don't want you in a negative mindset, particularly as the physics exam tends to be one of the later exams. And I want you to make sure that you're working consistently throughout the exam season and really showing the examiner all that hard work you've been putting in over the years. In paper two, you can be examined on any of the specification, but you should be making the paper two specific topics a priority. In magnetism, that means looking at the construction of electromagnets as well as the purpose of step up and step down transformers. Remember, step up transformers are located at power stations. They hugely increase the output voltage. And the reason for that is due to the equation P equals IV. Power remains constant. If voltage increases, current must decrease. And a lower current is good because it means that there's less of a heating effect on the wires, meaning that less energy is dissipated. When we reach our homes, we have step down transformers to reduce that voltage to a safe level of around 230 volts. It's worth lo looking at the construction and how those transformers work. And as I've said before, I've got lots of free videos on YouTube, as well as my revision guide has perfect notes on how that alternating current, which is supplied to the primary coil, sets up a changing magnetic field. Another important topic is the forces topics, specifically moment and momentum calculations. These come in lots of different guises, but fundamentally they use the same principles. So the principle of moments, remember, states that the clockwise moment equals the anti-clockwise moment. The conservation of momentum states that the momentum before equals the momentum after. Again, watch my videos, come join me on my online revision course next week if you want a bit more guidance here. Do pay attention to units. Always look at your unit conversions. Often in moments, you'll need to convert centimeters to meters. Momentum tends to be more straightforward because those units are kilograms, meters per second. But have a look at the answer box and look at the units provided and that will help guide you in your calculation. I'm gonna be spending an awful lot of time in my course next week looking at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagrams because I know people do not enjoy this part of astrophysics. We'll be looking at how you can use the Hertzsprung-Russell diagrams to determine at what point a star is in its life cycle and how you can use that to plot various stars on the Hertzsprung-Russell. And we'll also be looking at redshift and how that can be used as evidence for the Big Bang Theory. In recent papers, there's been quite a lot on oscilloscopes. Often they'll give you a trace showing an oscilloscope together with an X and Y axis label. They'll probably want you to use equations like frequency equals one over time period, V equals F lambda. You need to be able to use these equations. So you're gonna use the scale on the X axis to work out the time for one wave. For example, four milliseconds. You're gonna pop that into your equation to work out the frequency, and then you'll be able to calculate wave speed. So yeah, do make sure you're comfortable using multiple equations, particularly if there's four marks available. But yeah, the purpose of this video isn't necessarily for me to take you through every single paper two topic. After all, I have plenty of YouTube videos that can do that. I just want to make sure that you guys are in the right headspace, that you're feeling nice and confident, that you're working consistently, doing plenty of past paper practice, and above all, just trying your absolute hardest here to show the examiner how much you've learned and how that's going to translate itself to marks in the exam. So best of luck. Come and comment on this video 
When you finished your exam, I'd love to hear how you've gotten on and the sorts of questions that you were asked.